these are the things when we come upon them, we will come to the understanding that the earth is the Lord. There is no sector of economy, there is no part of life on earth that God has not ordained that believers should have believed. When you have the blessings of God, causes cannot do harm to you. The things that our politics do cannot have effect on you. They will wonder what is happening to this fellow. Is he a human being? He is a human being, but not an ordinary human being. You are not an ordinary human being when you have the power of God. There is no place you are that the hand of God cannot reach you. For one thing is sure, the word of God, when spoken, nothing can stop it. We are still going on with this message titled Tackling Lifetime Necessities. We're taking part five and the last. You will remember we had concentrated on family related lifetime necessities. We got into finance and economic related lifetime necessities. We also got into looking at spiritual and ministry related necessities and also concentrated on health related necessities. We are summarizing today in one particular angle all of these four areas, the examples we picked had to do with people who made efforts and their efforts paid off. They called God. They exercised faith. They did heavy prayers. God heard their prayers through the Lord Jesus, through other ministers, and their lifetime necessities were tackled. Today, we are looking at the place of God's favor or divine choice in tackling lifetime necessities there are instances there are occasions where god sets out to walk he isn't relying on the prayers made he's not relying on the walks carried out by the recipient of his miracles or his bounties or his blessings he's not relying on what faith a person may have stretched he has work to do he has something to display. He has an aim. He has a purpose to carry out. A person under such situation is only receiving God's favor or he or she came to be a tool in the hands of God or becomes a vessel to be used to make a display of what God would want people to see at that particular time. Praise the Lord. So we are looking at how God can act outside our abilities, outside our efforts, outside whatever we may have done. It is part and parcel of God's program. In fact, it is God's first program before any other. In our salvation, it says, before ever we came to realize anything, when we were yet sinners, he sent his son who died for us. In creation, he made Adam and Eve put them in a place without labor. They had everything they needed right in that place. We have the story of this man that is a very common one in Christendom. He was born blind. And the passage shows us that at the time Jesus met him or sighted him or came across him, he had become a full grown man. I checked each instances where his parents spoke, where himself spoke, where neighbors spoke, where Pharisees spoke, each set spoke of him as a man, not as an adolescent, not as a teenager, not even as a youth, let alone a child. So you will consider that we may be talking about a person that may be way more than 35 years or more than 40 years old and we are told that he was born with this blindness he came into the world with it and the Lord brought a change in that 
which a person came into the world with, lived with for more than 30 years, more than 35 years, more than 40 years. It do look as if what we came into the world with are unchangeable. One would say, yeah, it's been with him right from birth. Don't think about changes. God made us from the beginning. If it becomes necessary for him to change any part of a person, he can change that path, including our behaviors, including the things we acquired, the threats we acquired, the genes we acquired, the set of things that control our behaviors and our conducts. May the Lord show you favor here this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. The disciples went with Jesus. They cited this man. And they remembered a dominant religious concept of the time. That misfortunes, problems, especially lifetime challenges must be a result or product of sinful habits. That if a person was found to be blind, there must have been some sin, either of him or parents or anyone. If a person is wallowing in heavy poverty, it must be that there were things he did wrongly for which he was suffering. That concept did not consider the fact that there are normal human errors. When a child is being born, there can be some errors. There are places a child is touched, a serious problem will occur from that beginning. It's nobody's sin, but just human error. That concept did not consider natural disaster, that sometimes you are just a victim of flood, victim of fire outbreak. You are just a victim of a particular happening that is not man-made. They are natural. That concept did not consider the presence of the devil. That the devil does not wait for you to displease him or for you to find his trouble, if there is anything like that, before he strikes. Just like people who take pleasure in killing or stealing, it's like a hobby. They go doing it. It doesn't matter who they know or who they don't know. The devil is a wicked being. He carries out his activities every time, everywhere. A person need not sin to become part and parcel of his victims. That concept and that ideology did not consider the activities of evil strong men and strong women in some communities who delight in acquiring charms and killing people, destroying people, maiming people. They find a person who just gained that mission, they want to get that person down. They hear somebody is graduating or has graduated with first class. They want to ruin the person's life. They spend their money, they travel far and near. to get these things done. They want to stop people from getting married. They want to stop people from having children. They want children to go the way that parents will stay in pains. This concept did not consider these realities. Of course, you won't blame the Jews. They came from a background, a spiritual one, where virtually everyone was a child of God. Everyone served God. There were things that wasn't common in their place. Yet a time came, sorcerers started to imagine. Some had come from foreign countries. Some became men and brethren of the stock of Israel. With time, native doctors started to imagine. With time, they started bringing gods from other places. Priests started to imagine. This concept did not take cognizance of this. And when his disciples saw this person born blind, they felt there is a confusion here that need to be cleared. And they said to him, Master, please explain to us who sinned in this case. Is it this man born blind? Did he sin in the womb before he was born? Or is it his parents who have their sight whole 
and may have given birth to other children who are whole. Who sinned, please? Explain to us. And the master said, neither of the above. Not this man, not his parents. But he is in this condition that the works of God may be made manifest in his life. Israelis did not have strong teachings on the works of the devil. It was rare in the, in the Bible. I mean in the Old Testament. It was from the time of Jesus that activities of demon came very well into being. And you keep seeing from time to time new revelations will come up and people will begin to see something they haven't known before. He may, if they were at the time of hearing and understanding everything, get them also see that the devil could do that. But he took to the positive side and said he is like this so that the works of God will be made manifest in him. In other words, he is like this so that there could be a person that God will use to display his powers, to demonstrate his goodness, to show his rulership of the earth, to show the set of things that he can do. And this attention drawn moved him. He said, I am the light of the world. As long as I am here, I remain the light. And we're going to do the works of God while it is day, before the night falls. He decided to walk in the life of that man. It is possible he was not hearing the conversation. We can't find that he was part and parcel of the conversation. He didn't seem to know anything going on. But the Lord chose to help him. Praise the Lord. He chose to heal him. He chose to use him as a tool for that purpose. And he decided to go to him to walk. Did you hear that he did prayers? No. Did you hear he gave any gift? Not at all. Did you hear he stretched forth faith? No. In fact, after his healing, and they were asking him, who, who is the person? He said, one person. They said, he is Jesus. That would mean that he probably may not have heard so much about Jesus before. They said, where is he? He said, I, I don't know. He didn't know, and he didn't seem to be looking for him. Until Jesus came again and met him a second time. Divine favor is something strong. God's choice is something strong. What decides it, what are the prerequisites or the set of things he considers are unknown to human. I can only pray that I enjoy his favor, that I enjoy his choices, that I enjoy his calling. That if he is looking for somebody who he will bless to show community that he can bless. Let me be the one, let you be the one. If he looks for somebody whose healing will be used to show people that he still heals, including including incurable diseases. I should be the one, you should be the one. If he wants to show that he can make rich outside our struggle, outside our efforts, let me be the one, may you be the one. If he's looking for a person who he can use to show that he has power over the devil. So that if a group of people have congregated and they have done something, they may have kept it hidden under a tree, they may have stocked it very well, using a stone to cover it, sealing it for life. They will come and see that the person they have done this against, who they thought was going to die, or they think he will never do well, they see him emerge in the same place, they see him come back with a vehicle, they see him come back to build. May the Lord choose you to be used in such occasion to demonstrate that he has power over the kingdom of darkness. Have I said efforts are not necessary? No. I have not said so. You will remember the impotent man who was by the pool. 
he was making his own effort in his own way. He was sick for 38 years. It had become a lifetime necessity. He had shown a measure of perseverance. Even where his situation was looking hopeless against hope, he remained around there. Hoping against hope that perhaps one day I might find help and somebody throws me into this pool. But in the issue of divine favor, the Lord Jesus came in. Sick people were in their hundreds. Among those hundreds, if not thousands, were also those who probably do not have anybody to also help them. But he went straight to one person and said to him, would you want to be healed? And the man started telling stories. When he finished, he said, do, take up your mat and go. Wow. What do you mean take up your mat? Take up your mat. As he made to pick his mat, he found he had been healed. Completely healed. And he moved his mat. In fact, by the time the Pharisees were asking him, he wondered. He said, he who made me whole, the same instructed me to carry my mat. <laughs> this, you, <laughs> you said carrying mat is wrong on Sabbath day. For 38 years, I have been sick. We don't know when he relocated to that pool. Now somebody healed him and you are asking him, how comes you are not observing Sabbath? He said, Oga, the person that rescued me from trouble gave me this instruction. He asked me to pick my mat and go and I'm, I've picked it. I'm going. <laughs> I'm going with it. <laughs> I'm going with it. D divine favor works in a manner difficult to understand. And my prayer is, may the Lord favor you. May, may, may the Lord look unto you with concern outside your efforts, outside your labor. Your labor may have been put in there. Your struggles may have been put in there. It may not have been enough to get you what you are looking for. But may the Lord walk up to you. May he decide to get to you and do something in your life that whoever sees it will wonder, is this how God works? And it will be that you are the tool. You are the vessel. You are the individual God is using to showcase his power, to showcase his glory, to showcase his ability to showcase his love for mankind. May you be the person that he will use to show community that it pays to trust God. It pays to serve the almighty God. When I was concentrating on this message yesterday, I had something that appeared outside of this. I had the Lord say, judgment on the gods. And, and, and it drew my attention to something very serious. As I got more into this explanation, I could see something also running from this kind of concept that people had, that they held before. We still have remnants of them in our case, in our societies right here. There is judgment today on the gods, those who have held you, the hand that held you, that said you wouldn't do well, that hand must be lifted up. Whether in peace or in pieces, the hand that have kept you stagnant, that you can't move beyond where you are, that hand must be lifted. Whether in peace or in pieces, the hand that says that you cannot find joy, you cannot find happiness, that hand must be lifted. Whether in peace or in pieces, that cooking pot from where they send strange fire into your business, that pot must be quenched. Whether in peace or in pieces, that pot that goes cooking and they send strange fire into your health and keep you down in unhealthy situation for so long that pot must go down whether in peace or in pieces for the bible tells us something in isaiah chapter 9 from verse 5 that every battle of the warrior is with confused noise a garment rolled in blood it is with burning and fuel of fire for unto us a child is born unto us a son is given 
The government shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called Wonderful, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon his government, upon his throne, upon the throne of David. He will order it and he will establish it with judgment and with justice. The zeal of the Lord, the zeal of the Lord of hosts shall perform this. The counsel of heaven will perform this. The decree of the watchers will perform this. The, the efficacy of the blood of Jesus will perform this. The power in the name of Jesus will perform this. The forces working against you cannot survive this session. We are releasing the fire of the Holy Spirit, the power of God, wherever they are walking, wherever they are walking, wherever they have decided to pitch their light, fire in the name of Jesus. They cannot get off this session in the name of Jesus Christ. Those that said over their dead body, you will not succeed. They cannot succeed this session. They cannot go off this session. The Lord says government. He said, he said, judgment on the gods. Judgment on the gods. Those who represent the gods. Those who walk on their behalf. Those who act on their behalf. Who want to maim. Who want to keep people down. The strong man in your community. The strong man within your family. Will release the fire of the Holy Spirit. Will release the counsel of God. Will release the decree of the watchers they cannot succeed this session in the name of Jesus Christ I speak divine favor to your finances I speak divine favor to your businesses I speak divine favor to the things you do to earn a living I speak divine favor to your jobs I speak divine favor to the things that concerns you I speak divine favor to matters concerning your marriage the Lord will showcase his love his bounty on matters concerning your marriage I speak divine favor on matters concerning your health yes every part of you will walk every part we deliver every part will function every part we give what it is expected to give I speak favor lift up your hands and begin to pray under this atmosphere whatever it is that is still hanging whatever it is that is still around you speak to God I receive your favor I receive your power I receive the spirit of God I receive the set of things that are meant to clear me up and get me moving showcasing your presence showcasing your works manifesting your bounty it's not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Not of him that wheel it, not of him that run it. But of God that shows mercy, Mareta Franco Sorombo, Menate Frama, Braco Sorombo, Male Flaco, Sobrona Fama, Male Prato Soma. This year we still walk, it's still going to be great, it's still going to be wonderful. The mercies of God, the mercies of God, the wisdom of God, the, the mercies. The, the compassion of God, the favor of God, the grace of God, they will work for you. Maram lelo rapa kasha prapa ha, keplo soro prate fa mamba groro prosha ha, rekro prosha le na fa bara ha, na ne mo rapa ne prosha fa bara bro. Hey, no one can, no one. Yes. Uh -huh. Who hey. can stand against the day? Yes. Yes. No one can. No one will. 
this message has inspired you. Thank you for watching. To other for this message, please call 080 36 41 2443. God bless you.